Hi there, so this video is part of my playlist titled Discussing Historical Topics and today's topic is the Battle of Britain. In particular, could the Germans have invaded Britain without gaining air superiority? My answer is yes. So anyway, first of all, the German side, Luftwaffe 3 in northern France, commanded by Sperrill, Luftwaffe 2 commanded by in France and the Low Countries, commanded by... What was his name? Kessering. And Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe 5 commanded by Sponnik, which was in Norway and Denmark. On the British side, you had Air Chief Marshal Sir Hugh Dowding of Fighter Command. Uh, South West England, Fighter Command Group 10. South Eastern London, Fighter Command Group 11. Uh, the Midlands and North, uh, Fighter Command Group 12. And then the North of England and Scotland, Fighter Command Group 11. So, Anyway, my argument is this. The prerequisites of a German invasion of Britain was air superiority. Where did that come from? It actually came from Raider, Admiral Raider, Grand Admiral Raider of the German Navy, the Kriegsmarine. Hitler said to Raider, what do we have to do to invade Britain? Raider said, you need air superiority first. This is my argument. I believe Raider set the bar far too high. I'm going to start, I'm going to continue. So, why? Well, look at the English Channel. The English Channel throughout most of the war was actually a no man's land. In the First World War in August, the British troops travelled straight across the Channel to France and then directed by the France to the battlefield where they engaged the Germans at Mons. August the 4th, 1914, that's when the German Britain de declared war against Germany, and within a week they were actually fighting German troops. Second World War comes along. September the 3rd, Britain declares war on Germany, but British troops did not take their positions along the Franco-Belgian border and the Franco-German border until the end of September. Why? Because... They didn't go across the channel this time, they went all the way around to the Atlantic, to the French ports on the Atlantic. And then by train, they travelled all across France to France's eastern borders. Why did they do this? Because the British High Command, the RAF and the Navy, believed that the Royal Navy and the troop ships would be exposed to German air attack. Now, during the Battle of Dunkirk, and the uh, Operation Dynamo, the evacuation of the British Expeditionary Force back to England, the Luftwaffe had the better of the Royal Navy. The Luftwaffe were damaging and sinking ships left, right and centre, and the Royal Navy had to withdraw its big ships. The battle cruisers, the battle ships, the, uh, the destroyers were basically in the middle of the ocean, and it was the small boats had to go back and forward. They had to be out of reach of the German Luftwaffe. So this is the question is this. Now, RAF, the fighter command, but they also had bomber command. The Luftwaffe didn't go after the whole of the RAF. They only went after fighter command. The fighters in the air and on the ground, the airfields, the fighter airfields and the factories that made the, f the fighters. And then in the final phase of the battle, the went after London in order to entice what they thought was the last remnants of RAF Fighter Command. Now, how the battle turned out, blah, 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 this isn't the point of the argument. I'm arguing the Germans could have landed successfully. They knocked out RAF Ma Manston, or Masterston, however you pronounce it. There it's on. That was knocked out. Now, the Germans had their airborne troops. They had their parachute division, and they had their glider division, which in all was 16,000 men. They, they could eat the, the German Luftwaffe, had the RAF on the ropes all throughout the Battle of Britain. Are you saying to me that the Luftwaffe could not, excuse me, could not have provided an air corridor with which to send troops over by sea, but as a prerequisite, by the German airborne troops seizing an airfield or even seizing a slice of the coast, they could have done that.
The idea was for the German 16th and 19th armies to land on the southeast coast with the German 6th army landing on Limes Bay. The Germans missed the bus. The Germans could have invaded Britain without air superiority. But remember at this time, the British had no tanks. And even with tanks, the Germans would have overcome the local defences. Take uh, the Battle of Crete the following May. The German airborne troops landed on Malamy Airport, Airfield and Western Crete. The British had tanks. The Germans, paratroopers and airborne troops still managed to seize the airfield and General Freiburg ordered a patrol. The Germans could have landed their airborne troops, seized an airfield or a slice of the coast and with their gliders and JU-52s ferried men in. The Luftwaffe, even though it was directed against RAF, could still have kept an eye on the Royal Navy and kept the Royal Navy at bay. A lot of people think that the plan was just in case if the German invasion force was crossing the channel that the Royal Navy was going to come into the channel from the east and from the west. That is, That was not the case. The RAF was the primary weapon to deter a German invasion. Had a German invasion occurred, the army and home, ca home guard would have been thrown in to try and repel the invasion. The Royal Navy was not being factored in. The Royal Navy was Britain's best form of survival, but also its only best weapon to continue the war. Britain could, even if Britain was invaded and occupied, the idea was this. The Royal Navy would flee to Canada with what troops, pilots and men and equipment it could and it would continue the war from Canada. Britain could not be recovered from a German occupation without the Royal Navy. The Royal Navy would never have been sacrificed to prevent a German invasion of Britain. I just want you to keep that in mind. And remember, the Luftwaffe owned the Royal Navy's ass during the Battle of France and Dunkirk. And in the Battle of May, Battle of May, the Battle of Crete in May the following year, 1941, again, the Luftwaffe owned the Royal Navy's ass. The Luftwaffe sunk three battle cruisers and six destroyers, but it also, during the Battle of Crete, damaged 13 more Royal Navy ships, including two battleships and the Royal Navy's only aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean. The Luftwaffe could have created, well, engaging the RAF could simultaneously create an air corridor for the airborne troops to seize forces, to seize land or an airfield on South East England, England. The Luftwaffe could easily have kept the Royal Navy at bay and the Royal uh, the Kriegsmarine could have, with the Luftwaffe, especially the gliders and the JU-52 transport planes, ferried men in. And once the Germans would have had a foothold on the southeast of England, Britain would have fell in a matter of weeks. Admiral Raider set the bar too high. The Battle of Britain wasn't directed by Goring, it was directed by Sperrill and it was, uh, Kessel Ring. And they were the ones who advised Hitler to attack London en masse to bring out the rest of the RAF fighters. But that's another story for another day. So that's my argument. The German Luftwaffe and the Royal German Kriegsmarine could have seized a portion of South East England without air superiority and without the threat of the Royal Navy. There's my argument. Thank you.